Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Joining me now to discuss the most recent information attack on Ukraine is the director of the Mohila School of Journalism and founder of the fake-busting website stopfake.org, Mr. Yehan Fachenko. Mr. Fachenko, welcome back to the Viewpoint. Hello, thanks for inviting me. Mr. Fachenko, um, <clears throat> just recently Ukraine found itself under yet another information attack. A video was spread online where members of Ukrainian military were threatening the Dutch <coughs> citizens with violence in case they don't vote in favor of Ukraine in the upcoming referendum. What is your take on this? Yeah, actually, Stop Fake was one of many media organizations which paid great attention to uh, this information, and finally, it appeared to be fake. Uh, we researched into this story, and we have found a lot of evidences why this story is fake. And this is just one of the examples of uh, false flag operation, part of the uh, active measures against Ukraine, and we definitely can uh, track it back to. To, to the country which must be very interested in bringing this story up and try to kind of spoil the image of Ukraine uh, again because of the upcoming referendum. And this is just one of many stories which would connect now Ukraine to the Netherlands. And I think that uh, we would see many others to come. And this country you're talking about is obviously Russia, correct? Uh, yeah, because uh, we always look into who might be interested in putting up the stories like this and to producing this uh, fake at this very time and this very kind of uh, uh, market uh, for fake news. So if we think about who is interested, uh, definitely we come back to the answer, Russia is interested. Mr. Fashenko, you are the expert on fakes and from the standpoint of uh, creating the fake news, how well this video was executed? Uh, actually, it was very poorly executed video, and uh, uh, and again, this is not uh, important to those who were expected to believe it in the first place. So they just want to uh, make a lot of stories like this. So it's not a question of quality and that they really want to find a big target audience. They just want to confuse audience, to bring pieces like that, and it doesn't matter is it good quality or bad quality, they would be just continue producing all this. So things. basically create a mess. Yeah, they create a mess to make sure that people in the Netherlands would be absolutely confused and frustrated about Ukraine and what's happening in here. Mr. Fetchenko, let's play the devil's advocate here. If you were creating this fake video, what would you have done differently? Uh, of course, I would try to do it more authentic from the point of view of production, uh, kind of uh, better uh, uh, likeliness of uniform weapons, which is always used in um, a little bit better script. And uh, of course, uh, it should be more logic in terms of how uh, this uh, kind of uh, referendum question and the association agreement can be connected to terrorist attacks. So for me, this looks very much like traditional Kremlin tactics. If you are not into agreement with us, we are going to explode you. Uh, so definitely that's not a type of Ukrainian narrative and uh, battalions like Azov were never involved in uh, terrorist acts. So why they would start that with a country which is very far away from Ukraine and uh, promise to do something like this. So it's very uh, logical from the point of view of continuity of uh, all the previous events. And, um, Mr. Fetchenko, it's no secret that uh, the right-wing groups, and many consider themselves to be part of um, uh, one of these right-wing groups, are not that keen for Ukraine to join the EU. And um, a lot of European right-wing parties are not pro-EU as well. So why stage this video showing that the right-wing Ukrainian uh, group uh, wants to, for Ukraine to so keenly to, to become a part of the EU that they are ready to, 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 to do violence? So what is the, the rationale behind this video? Yeah, actually, you mentioned one of the contradictions uh, why they would why they would do that in the first place. And um, uh, another question is that the role and importance of uh, right-wing uh, groups in Ukraine is really overblown beyond proportion. And uh, this is a big story for Western media and the media in the Netherlands, but uh, we should definitely look how real this uh, 
danger is and how influential the far-right groups are in Ukraine, how many percent of people are rallying behind uh, the groups themselves and the ideas they represent. And Ukraine definitely demonstrated that this is a very pro-European pro country in terms of values, institutions, aspirations, and uh, I don't see why uh, people in the Netherlands should uh, not support Ukraine's intention to be more involved in EU and uh, uh, so th this is definitely would be a very decisive moment uh, because the one thing Ukrainians were standing for European values in during the Euromaidan and demonstrated it during many other instances but uh, now Ukrainians definitely are expecting to receive the uh, supportive signals from the uh, other partner in this process because this is kind of two-way process. Two -way process two -way Absolutely. So, Mr. Fashenko, um, how important it is to, for, for the government to react to such sort of fakes and um, uh, is, it, is, it, is it important how crucial it is to react immediately? Yeah, I think this is very important to react immediately and to send very clear signals that this is not a, a real Ukraine which you see over there and uh, nobody really stands behind this. And again, as I mentioned, this is a false flag operation conducted by another country. And I think this time government was quite responsive and uh, provided a rapid response and explaining itself. And this is really very important. But another uh, crucial issue here is that it's not only government's role in here, but also of uh, uh, other non-governmental institutions in Ukraine, uh, media both in Ukraine and the Netherlands, to explain to the audience over there what is that and who might stand behind, because definitely this is not a first signal uh, sent to the uh, Western audience that there are active measures over there and which country is conducting them. And we can find many hundreds of other examples of how propaganda and fake uh, news are used to uh, compromise Ukraine and uh, Ukraine's intentions. And we would see many other things to come. So I think this is the role of all Ukrainian society to be more inclusive in this process. Mr. Fenton, we're talking this. about the government's response to, to, this, um, to this video. How would you assess it? Was it uh, sufficient? insufficient in your opinion? Yeah, I think it was quick and sufficient and different channels were used to explain and deliver this important message. So I think this time we were uh, quick enough and the government on the other hand was quick enough. So we sent really very strong signal. But again, we should be warned about other uh, things like that, uh, which might happen and would be happening in the future. And we might be prepare to find effective ways, again, to communicate ourselves. So talking about the future and in light of the upcoming important um, uh, vote in the Netherlands in, in April, uh, what kind of new fakes or additional fakes uh, Ukraine can expect uh, from Russia? Yeah, there are many types of the narratives which can be invented over here. Uh, I think we can expect uh, the continuation of MH17 story, pop up in different uh, uh, Russia-oriented perspectives. Uh, or we can expect uh, uh, different uh, uh, economic uh, scenes again popping up and explaining to the audience in Netherlands that uh, if you vote for uh, association agreement, you then would be kind of paying a high price and uh, you should think twice about if you need Ukraine as a failed or failing state on board, or you would rather keep it uh, away. Probably a uh, uh, migrant story would be playing as well, like the danger of influx of Ukrainian migrants coming if Ukraine would be allowed in, and if, for example, a liberalization of visa regime would be happening. And other things can be really played to make sure that the uh, uh, Western audience in general would perceive Ukraine as a So a lot, of topics, a, so a lot of, of topics place. might be exploited. And um, Mr. Fetchenko, um, uh, in your opinion, and should the, the overall strategy of the Ukrainian government uh, go from offensive to defensive? Because uh, Russia is continuously ex exploiting the topic of the right-wing parties and right-wing movements, no parties, <laughs> movements, here in Ukraine, whereas at the same time, Russia is financing the right-wing parties in Europe, France, Hungary, Poland, other countries. So shouldn't Ukrainian government, instead of defending itself all the time, 
uh, just start exposing the, the, the Russian um, involvement and Russian support, including financial support, with the right-wing parties in Europe. Yeah, I, I think there are already signals that there would be more and more attention to Russia's involvement in European affairs. Uh, and, for example, we just saw the news that uh, uh, U.S. Uh, Senate authorized CIA to look into how Russia is financing different political okay, parties. Okay, but, but what about Ukrainian government? Should Ukrainian government be ha have it on the top of, the, of its information policy? Yeah, I, I think it's not only up to Ukrainian government, because uh, governments in Europe itself should be also aware of this danger in looking yeah, into this. Yeah, but as part of Ukrainian information policy, Ukrainian information security. Of course, we should continue explaining this phenomena, and I am very happy that now we see more and more resources available to those who want to get more information on far-right parties. We now see a lot of uh, academic interest to this. We see a lot of academic articles explaining this phenomena. And again, the bottom line here is that this is really blown beyond the proportions by, by media, and we should really be more uh, kind of uh, realistic about the size and scope of far-right activities in Ukraine. And if, again, if we would compare 1, 2 percent, which they are gaining during elections here, to 25, 30 percent, which they are gaining in Europe, so then we definitely uh, put Ukraine in much better spotlight and explain that this is very artificial danger and, again, a part of the active measures of another country. And on the other hand, what Ukraine should be doing to explain itself, because we should explain that Ukraine is not only about uh, far right or about economic uh, difficulties, but we should provide uh, Europe with more information what positive is Ukraine is about. So we should create more and more positive uh, narratives about what's happening here in Ukraine. Yeah, it looks like a lot of tasks uh, for the Ukrainian government in its information policy. Mr. Fetchenko, many thanks for finding time to come and talk to us. Uh, we were talking about the dangers of Russian propaganda machine with the director of the Mohila School of Journalism and founder of the fake busting website StopFake.org, Mr. Johan Fetchenko. I'm Vladimir Salhub. Thank you for watching Viewpoint.